Hello beautiful people and welcome back to a new Precious Plastic video. In our Kenya series, we are going all the way up to Lamu Island at the north coast of Kenya to visit the Flip Floppy project which has built an entire sailing boat out of plastic waste, traveled around East Africa to create a movement to tackle plastic pollution and actually build up a whole recycling infrastructure here for the islands of the Lamu archipelago, turning plastic into boats and beautiful furniture. So actually today I'm really excited because I'm not only the moderator but also the host of this episode as I've been part of the Flip Floppy team for as long as I've been part of the Precious Plastic team. So welcome and let me and my crew give you a brief introduction to the project. Okay, welcome. My name is Ali Abdalaskanda. I'm a carpenter, a boat builder and I'm also a co-founder of the Flip Floppy project. We started this project for the aim of awareness, beating the pollution on plastic in our environment. We succeeded to build the first plastic DAO as our first testing. Uh, we use our recyclers in Kenya doing the parts. It was an open mold, making different parts. And we brought those parts in our community, collaborating with our boat builders, using the traditional way of building DAOs. And we succeeded to make the first prototype of our plastic selling DAO. So we succeeded to, to launch that first recycled plastic DAO and we went to the three expeditions. We started the first expedition along the east coast of East Africa up to Zanzibar and we went to the second expedition in Lake Victoria, the second largest lake in the world and we had our last third expedition in our Lamo Archipelago. The aim of the expedition was to bring the awareness to the community. We enabled to collaborate a lot of uh, stakeholders, uh, community leaders, lawmakers, hotelians and it, it brought a, a big impact in our community and East Africa. Still, our prototype was the testing for us to reach and to build a bigger DAO. So now we are on research of making a bigger path for us to build a big DAO more than this side. So to make this big boat happen, precious plastic machines are sadly too small to actually make those big parts. So we knew we needed a bigger scale factory to actually make the parts here, to have the full process under control. So luckily, we fundraised and we actually managed to get big machinery here on Lamo Island. Quite a big challenge to even get them here. With those machines, we obviously had to set up the whole infrastructure around it because you can't just have machines, you also need to run them, the electricity, the people running them. In the same time, we actually got a grant supporting us with all of this, which allows us now to have a full system and somehow it made, made us end up becoming an actual proper recycler. So let me show you our facilities and the people working there. Okay, so we'll start with our big facility dealing with the big amounts of plastic. Hello, I'm um, Lynette Alo, uh, Community Coordinator, Flip Floppy Project. Here we are, this is our material recovery facility. We've been bringing plastics here for the last one year now. We've collected over 170 tons from community members. We have over 700 community members who are contributing. I think you see what we have to deal with on a daily basis and it just keeps coming. It never stops. The plastic comes from the community unsorted and then we have our sorting team. Salam alaikum. <laughs> they are sorting now into the different types. We have PET, we have a lot of plastic bottles, um, a lot of plastic bags, all sorts of big things. So this is now a sort of PET pile. Then here we have our crushing room, two crushers. Kitonga! <laughs> Salama! <laughs> they crush up to one ton a day and this one is actually even with a blowing system. So it sucks the plastic out and then it's collected here. So after crushing, it goes to washing. So here we have our washing automation system. Salam alaikum. <laughs> so we have our washing team here and they're washing about one ton a day. When they're done with, with washing, they store it here until there's space up for drying. Here on the cement, the plastic dries really well. So once the material is crushed and washed and dried, it goes into our material bank, which from there, it now goes to our extrusion room. So this is our big extrusion facility. Big extruder, big tank, big molds. Okay, I am Maurice, uh, the recycling manager. 
you can see behind me is the extruder, 50 horsepower, 2 meters long barrel. On the other side, you can see our, our cooling bath and our rolling table where we put our molds. And we have our molds on this side. On a good day, we do around 200 kilograms of profiles of different, different profiles from 9 by 1.5 to 5 by 5 to 4 by 4. We have literally every small thing, even for the boat parts. This side are my crew. Uh, this is Mr. Habu Bakari. This is Mr. Owino. And this now makes my team. So we are in here on a daily basis, making sure we pass the cycling methods and innovation way forward. So once the uh, lumber is labeled, weighed and labeled, we go to our lumber storage. So here you can see our lumber storage, beautiful recycled plastic, colorful profiles. So we have a lot of the standard profiles, square, flat, whatever. But then apart from our standard profiles, we also need custom parts for the ribs and for different parts of the boat. So those we have to make custom molds. So here you see some of the V-shape, um, L-shape for, for different sorts of ribs. And actually this is something where I got inspired from our how-to that we have on the First Plastic Community platform, where you have different modules and you put them together. Um, so you can make different shapes and then when you're done you just take them all apart and the part comes out But yeah, basically with this now we make the boats and also carpentry. So let's go to the carpentry shop Okay, Aslamo is known as a good place or best place for the furniture and my family We are really based in uh, making furniture and boat building So for us it has been so good that we used to apply the same technique of making this type of furniture And now we apply the same technique to make plastic furniture my name is Harrison Mai. I'm a carpenter. Here, as you can see, it's my workshop. And here, we make different furniture. Okay, like this door, like this is lamp chair. This is a sun bed, different types of chairs. And this is a day bed. This is a double seater. And this is a dustbin. This has actually one of our beautiful doorknobs. Many, many, many type of furniture, whereby we pass through some different stages like the planning, cutting, we do mortising, also lathing, we can do carving, so many things we can do with the plastic lumber. We do it like as the wood but there are some differences between wood and the plastic. How we started it was, it was very difficult but right now we, we are now getting on the track. Uh, I like working with plastic because in some ways it's difficult but there are some stages which are very easy. So uh, I, I like wa working with plastic. The last but not less important part of the tour, actually the most important for this video, is our classroom. Welcome! So here's our classroom slash precious plastic workspace. We have our bicycle shredder that was built based on the design of Kunststoff Schmiede. You find the how-to online on the community platform. We have a basic shredder built from plastic Rafiki in Nairobi. We have the injection machine made from plastic printer in Austria with a lot of molds. So we have some of the simple 2D molds. And then we have doorknob and pot molds from plastic printer, the bead mold from easy mold. And then we also have this newest addition, not an pre official pressure plastic machine, but also small scale, which is this filament extruder because we will need a lot of filament for plastic welding and I'm going to explain that in a bit. So obviously with these machines we would never be able to actually deal with all the roughly 15 tons of plastic coming in every month but as Flip Floppy is all about education and innovation they actually play a really big role here too because first of all they're small enough to actually carry with us on events and even on the expedition on the boat so we, we were actually shredding and injecting on the water showing even the remote communities the process from plastic waste to a finished product. And it also allows us to do a lot of material tests with things where we are not sure of. So we tested, for example, some fishing ropes, some of the plastic bags, which are really difficult in the extruder. And actually, before we had our bigger machines, we tried the precious plastic extruder together with a solar module to make bigger profiles like this using the heat of the sun. So this is the solar cooker. Um, so we use the precious plastic extruder to extrude into a bigger mold using the heat of the sun, the sunlight, to heat the mold and keep it hot enough for a lot of plastic to actually fill that mold. It took seven hours. We have it documented on our video and we also have it documented on the community platform. So if you're interested to learn about that, you'll find it online. And as you probably all know, precious plastic machines are just perfect for educations. And we actually started a course last year teaching young locals the full process of plastic recycling, 
circular design, circular economy, and the traditional skills of boat building and carpentry, but this time with plastic. And with the precious plastic machines, it's just amazing because they can just play around with the materials, get to know the processes without actually having to use the big, scary machines and super heavy molds. And actually being a precious plastic workspace here and having the machines allows also now to easier make the bridge to the precious plastic community, to the online tools, the videos, the academy, the how-tos, the map where they can find other workspaces and really makes them connect more easily to that community. And also that whole thinking of open source, documenting and sharing your, your techniques is now something much closer to them and makes sense because they see how many more people do it and how that can really help each other. So actually documentation is also something we implement into that course. So actually with the first group of students, we built this fishing canoe, completely made out of recycled plastic, obviously. And this whole process we documented together with the students. So in fact, next week, we are going to publish the how-to together with a really nice documentation video. So that's coming up next week. And for our boat building, we are actually looking into a technique that might be very interesting for many of you plastic recyclers too, which is plastic welding. So we use that here for sealing our gaps. Um, the first technique is actually inspired by a how-to of how to make plastic welding in a low-tech way. But we also got a tool now which does that professionally and that opens up a lot of opportunities. You can make joinery, you can join different surfaces without actually using any screws, you can make pa custom parts. So if you're interested in that technique, let us know because maybe we can even make a bonus video for you. With a cat. Cat will also be inside. So for me, who started off with precious plastic machines and more the small scale recycling and now experiencing the bigger scale and the potentials, going really big, making big parts, long planks, that's really exciting. But of course also learning what are the challenges of the industry. My name is uh, Davina Ngay and I'm one of the program managers here at the Flip Floppy Project in Lamo. I guess what we have known or what we've realized is that while we're collecting from the communities, from community groups and community members, this the problem can't be solved at the recycling level. It's expensive, it's time consuming and there's just too much plastic coming in. So we're looking at tackling it in different ways. Uh, the first and the most important is having regulations and bans on single-use plastics at a national and at a regional level. So some of you might have known that Kenya has really stringent bans on single-use plastic bags. Um, so you won't find those here or you'll find very minimum quantities here. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff that is a problem, that is a headache, it's difficult or impossible to recycle. And what we want to see is regulations so that if it can't be recycled, it shouldn't be sold at all. Yeah, so I would say let's keep on clearing up the mess and make the most out of it and make beautiful things. But let's also try to make sure that we are actually fighting against the system that even creates this mess. So I think that's it for today from the Flip Floppy Project. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, make sure you subscribe, you like it, you comment, so you help with the algorithm. And if you want to go a step further, you can make a donation or even become a Patreon, supporting our work and this whole Precious Plastic community with their work on a more regular basis. Yeah, and I think you don't want to miss the next video where we show you how we made this beautiful little canoe with our flip floppy students. So check it out next week and have a good time. See you in the next video. Bye! Sanjay Sana, Sanjay Sana.